Welcome to Electro Online, and now let's talk about how the solar system became as differentiated as it is. So in the inner solar system, we have Mar uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And then further away, we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. How did that got to be the way it is? And first of all, these are the terrestrial planets and these are the big gas planets. So why do we find terrestrial planets in the inner solar system and gas planets on the outer solar system? Well, when the sun became a true star and began nuclear fusion at the center and began to bathe the solar system with tons and tons of radiation, the radiation would flood the solar system and whenever it bounced up against that protoplanetary disk that was filled with dust grains and metal and rock and small pieces and all kinds of water vapor and so forth, well, when the radiation hit these pieces of metal and rock, the momentum carried through by the radiation was relatively small compared to the mass of the metal and the rock. These are heavier things, they coalesce together ele electrically, and so those particles barely budged when radiation slammed into them. But then when radiation slams into a small little water molecule, or in this case, yeah, just a, a single water molecule, because at these high temperatures, temperatures here would be sufficiently high that water vapor would not condense, it would remain in vapor state. So when these small little water molecules get hit by the radiation, they would get big pushes and get, they would obtain large velocities in an outward direction based upon the radiation just pushing them. So slowly over time, so the radiation coming from the sun would bounce into the small particles, give them a large velocity and they would, they would fly off into the far reach of the solar system and the larger particles they would get budged up by, by the radiation but they would just move a little bit because they're much bigger and heavier and the momentum of the large particles of metal and rock would be much greater than the momentum of the radiation and so it would stay behind. So what happened then is the inner solar system would get cleaned out from all the lighter material which would get pushed here and all the heavier material would stay behind eventually and forming the terrestrial planet. Remember, the terrestrial planets on average are half metal, half rock, and that would then be the leftover from that period of the, in the, the beginning of the solar system. Now, what about this line right here, where somewhere between 300 and 200 Kelvin, water vapor would actually become frozen. So what would then be able to happen is that two molecules would come together and they would actually be able to bond together and begin to film crystalline, form crystalline structures, so forming ice structures. And so what happened then in this region, the water vapor would come together and form ice structures. And so then at that point, they would no longer get the enormous push from the radiation and that it would slow down and start populating this region right here. So this then is called well, the frost line or the snow line. Beyond that point, temperatures drop sufficiently for water vapor to begin to become ice crystals. Now notice there's in space where there's no no um, pressure, no atmospheric pressure, which is the vacuum of space. Water goes from vapor directly to solid and skips the liquid state. At low pressures, liquid it does not exist, at least not water vapor. So that's why at this region, all the light gases, any hydrogen, any helium, any water vapor, everything just would get pushed off into this region, and the inner solar system would simply be the void of that. Once it gets far enough, then gravitational attraction would slowly bring those together. Those small little grains would grow bigger and bigger through attraction. As they grow bigger and bigger, they form pebble size, they form fist size, they form house size clunks, and then they would come together and eventually form the gas planets. Remember, these gas planets are predominantly made out of gas and very little metal and very little rock in comparison. Eventually going far enough, we get to a place so far away from the sun that the temperature will drop to about 50 Kelvin. At that point, methane will also begin to freeze. And it turns out that the two gas planets, Uranus and Neptune, have a significant amount of methane within them because at that point, that would begin to freeze up and the radiation would then no longer be able to clear it out even further out there. It would stay in that region where those two gas planets would then form. So you can see the differentiation between the terrestrial planets and the gas planets is caused by the radiation from the sun and also the difference between Jupiter and Saturn, which are mostly hydrogen and helium, and then Uranus and Neptune would then have a predominantly a makeup of methane and ammonia rather than just helium and hydrogen like Jupiter and Saturn. Again, it's all about the early solar system being differentiated by the energy and the radiation from the sun, causing the heavy particles to stay behind and the lighter particles to be blown out there. Which, by the way, poses the question, 
where did all the water on the Earth come from? Because initially, when the Earth was first formed, just like Venus, Mercury, and Mars, they did not have any appreciable water because all of that water vapor had been pushed out into the far solar system. Eventually, a mechanism came about where the water then returned in a way where the Earth then would then get its oceans from. So, in the future, we'll do another video to show you how the inner planets ended up with all the water they ended up because initially when they first formed the planets they did not have the water to make the oceans and rivers and lakes that we have today. That was the early solar system and the frost line is the point where we can see the terrestrial planets in front and the gas planets behind it.